In this video, we're gonna go ahead and sand down some of the underside and get some primer on it. Stay tuned. All right guys, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is work on the front half of the car, basically from here forward. What we're gonna go ahead and do is clean up all the welds that we have from the floor pan replacement plus the transmission tunnel. And then I have some cleanup and stuff to do around here. I welded this on my back and it didn't turn out too great. Right here's a spot where I mismeasured. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that as well. And coming down here, again, just clean up around here on these welds. We might have to just uh, touch up some welds with some more weld here, but that's okay. We'll eventually be putting another coat on the inside of the car as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this stripped down, get all the welds cleaned up and Hopefully hit this with some epoxy primer. I'm not sure if I'll have time to hit this with epoxy primer uh, before we post this, but uh, that's the goal. Uh, get the front half done and epoxy primered, and then we can move to the back half of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start up in the front area and start working my way back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and knock down all the welds that we can hit with this four and a half inch angle grinder. And what I like to use for this is a 40 grit flap disc. So let's get to it. All right, so I got a lot of the ones I can get that I can see right now with this flat disc. And when I was purchasing this flat disc, I came across this radial type flat disc. So it would allow us to kind of hold the grinder this way here. And I thought this would be really good to uh, clean out weld areas, especially where panels come together like we have uh, right here on the floor pans. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap over to this. This first time using this, it's a 40 grit radial disc i'll put the information down in the description if you're interested uh, all right so i'm going to go ahead and swap this disc over to this we're going to try it out and i'll let you know what i think of it i'm always on the search for something to make grinding down well it's a lot easier maybe the better option is to learn how to tig weld but anyway all i got is a mig and my mig welds aren't always perfect so we're going to go ahead and try this out in these areas uh, in the floor pan here so let's go ahead and swap this out All right, so it's kind of interesting. It looks like we can use this on the flat side if we want, and then it also uh, looks like, you know, we can use it on this side. This is the reason I bought this. So let's go ahead and try it out on these floor pans. All right, guys, so these are the areas where I plan on trying this out, like kind of right in here. And then maybe even up here, because it's a little bit, it's not flat, so I couldn't get in there with the uh, flat disc. And then, of course, we got these areas up here as well. Of course, we got the same areas down here. I didn't start down here yet, but while I have this out, if it lasts long enough, we'll go ahead and do these two. All right guys, so it worked pretty well. It's a little hard to control, but uh, once you get it and be gentle because it's very aggressive, it pretty much took care of these. It's not kind of, it's not tight enough to get into these areas here, but it took down the bulk of it, which will make it easier for me to come in here and clean these up. And then over here where I was kind of close to all this stuff again, it took it down pretty good. This is looking pretty good. We got a little more work up in here to do, and then we'll be uh, pretty close to being ready to strip this down up here. I'm gonna go ahead and use that disc over here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and clean some of this up while I have it on there. And then I'll switch back to the flat one to do anything that's left over. So let's go ahead and do it.
All right, guys, quick check in. So we got the main part of the car done and I'm gonna go ahead and prime this today because it'll be a little while before I get to the rest of it and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, this part is ready to go, ready for primer. I've cleaned it about four times so far. We'll do it once more before we prime. So we got uh, everything cleaned up. It turned out really nice. We're just gonna prime up to here for now because when we do the firewall and everything, we'll probably bring the paint down to about this line here. So let's give us a little bit of overlap. I went over the welds again on the subframe connectors. Uh, I did this on my back before, and then I did some of it from inside the car and I didn't really like how it was. Uh, it didn't seem like I got that good of penetration with the welds on top. Uh, just because I could still see a little bit of uh, like the edge of the floor pan and stuff. So basically what I did is I just went around these all over again and got some much better welds in place. So definitely happy with that. I also got this piece taken care of here. Just kind of welded the gap shut. Not too difficult. So yeah, this is all ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and prime this. But uh, first, uh, let me show you what tools I use to do this. You'll notice I got everything out of the corners of all the little pieces and everything as well. Starting from left to right up here, we have cutoff wheel. I use that a lot to grind down welds. And if you guys remember, I had a, I had a lot of welds that I had to clean up from the floor pan replacement and all that stuff. So uh, we use the cutoff wheel. This goes together here. This is a double cut burr and these are all the different kinds that you can use. What I use that for is getting in tight corners so whenever I got welds, you know, in the tight corner that I can't get to with the cutoff wheel, I come in with this uh, double cut burr and find the right, you know, shape, size, get in there and clean it up. So this works really good. Just make sure you wear your safety gear because it uh, sheds metal like crazy. And, you know, I even got some in my gloves and then it started, uh, you know, cutting me or whatever. So it's... Um, awesome tool but definitely wear your safety gear so next i use this a lot it's just an angle die grinder with a two inch disc on it i use two inch sanding disc and three inch sanding disc when i use the three inch sanding disc on the two inch backing plate it gives you a little bit of flexibility so that when you're in the corner you can take that three inch disc and kind of ride these curved areas here a little bit it makes it nice and easy and if you've watched my other videos you know how much i like these these are these black hawk strip discs and uh, i have a video on these which i'll link to above you can check them out. So I like to come in after I get most of the paint off with these to kind of clean everything up. But these also work really good at removing paint too. It's just there's faster methods, which is this here. So on all the wide open areas, I took this four and a half inch angle grinder with a 40 grit flap disc and took as much paint off as I could. Remember when you're using this, if you start seeing sparks move on, you're not trying to take metal away. You're just trying to remove paint. So I'd remove a lot of paint with this and then I would hit it with this on the angle die grinder and it worked really well. Then, you know, when I had my welds and everything cleaned up, I used this. This also works good at getting paint out of like spot welds and everything. So this is just a wire wheel. If you have a lot of uh, undercoating or like thick rubber stuff or whatever, seam seal you got, you got to get rid of, the twisted wire wheels work really good on the four and a half inch angle grinder for that. Uh, I didn't have any of that here, so I didn't need to use those. Lastly, I used this Harbor Freight uh, siphon sandblasting gun. Basically, that's how I got all the corners and everything clean. So basically take this and just kind of clean out the corners and everything. Yeah, guys, that's basically what I used to kind of strip this thing down so far. So this stuff all worked really well. The other thing I want to mention is that I don't know if you can see in there or not, but you can see some green there and whatever. I used uh, Eastwood's internal frame coating. And basically you have, you know, this two foot hose here with a 360 degree spray end on the back of it or on the end of it. So what you do with this is you feed it up through these areas that you can't get to like I have here. And then this end here goes on the spray can. And basically you'll start spraying frame coating and then just pulling this out nice and slow. And what that does is it'll get all the insides of that stuff and cover it with uh, some rust protection. So the other nice thing is that being that the car is on its side, that internal frame coating kind of came out the sides and you know it kind of ran down these areas here. So that was nice. I know it got some coverage in there as well. So I hit these ones here, I hit these ones, and I also hit these areas here, but we got to talk about this. All right, guys. So. The reason I stopped here is because I have some rust in the torque box areas. So basically this area here is fairly solid from what I can tell. 
except where we got the overlap in metal. So you can see that this is pretty much rotted out. And if we look up here, you can see that it's swollen and uh, just basically flaking apart. And I didn't realize what was going on here. I did see this stuff before I flipped the car. I knew this was here. I thought I'd just be able to cut this out and put a patch in. Had, didn't really look at this. It's kind of a bummer I didn't see this ahead of time. And the reason being is that, you know, if I wanted to replace this whole torque box, I already welded my subframe connectors to the torque box. So the torque box you can see kind of goes over here and then it comes up and around and then this way and then up this way. And here's where your seatbelt from the inside, you know, bolts to and all that. So this is your torque box here and then your frame rail comes down and kind of overlaps that torque box. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. I'm definitely cutting this off. I might cut a section like this, cut this frame rail off and then see what I'm dealing with. The torque boxes aren't too bad in price, but the frame rails are crazy and I'm having a hard time finding just the front section. So I can find the rear section, I can find the whole rail, but just the front sections at a reasonable price, uh, not having luck right now. So this is on hold and that's why I kind of stopped here. I'm not gonna be replacing those frame rails or anything, but uh, definitely somewhere in here and all that. And I'm not gonna do any of this until I figure out what I'm doing. So if I get this frame rail off, and then uh, cut this top of this uh, torque box off here. Then if I see everything's kind of rotted in there, then we'll talk about replacing the whole thing. But if not, I'm just gonna kind of repair this area to where it needs and uh, go from there. So that's the plan. I'm gonna see if I can dig around and maybe find these on eBay or find somebody else that uh, might have these. What I'd like to do is get a replacement frame rail piece first so that I know how much to cut off. I don't wanna cut too much off and then get a replacement that only goes a little bit. So kind of on hold here, just figuring out what my best option is for this. Uh, again, these torque boxes aren't bad in price. I think you can get two of them for like 150 bucks or something like that. But the frame rails are anywhere from 250 to 300 a piece, I think. Up here, this isn't, this isn't rust up here. This is where somebody just got crazy with the welder. This is where the exhaust hangers are welded. But these frame rails are all very solid until you get up to right here. And then, like I said, I have this. I don't know why these kind of busted out the side like that. Maybe someone had something screwed in there at one point. I'm not sure. All right, so now we're looking at the bottom torque box. And this is where your leaf spring bucket gets bolted in at. So uh, what I have here is a tear across here and then down. And it, you know, then there's a hole on the other side. So it's not, it's not a rust hole, but it's the square hole. I don't know if you can see it. It's meant to be there. But anyway, this tore the whole way across here. And it seems pretty thick, so I don't know if it's just, you know, someone was uh, doing too many burnouts or what, but um, I can definitely weld this all together. But again, I just kind of want to inspect this and see what's going on here. Hopefully it's not due to thin metal. Uh, you can see sort of the same thing that you see up top. We have uh, just swollen metal in here and it's kind of going. And back here, I found another little spot, a thin spot. But again, once we go up, everything gets better. So. And even this, I hit all this area with a, a pick and uh, nothing, you know, this was the only one. So not exactly sure. It's interesting. So, and then we have the same hole on this side. I don't know if it's not as bad, but again, looks like something was in there. The other reason, it's not a big deal, but the other reason I don't want to rip these torque boxes out is because I cut out these seatbelt pockets that were up here and I had to like, kind of reshape and cut out, you know, a piece of this torque box. So just getting like a new, re so just getting a replacement, I'm gonna have to do some work because I'll probably have to cut it to fit this. And then also I doubt I'll be able to get all this out. So I'd have to make some kind of cut here and all that. So hopefully all this is good and we can just kind of maybe cut out this section here and replace it. And I'll put in some extra plates and whatever to make it nice and strong. But uh, that's what we're gonna be tackling next time. I wanna get that done before I move backwards any further. So once I get that done, it'll be a piece of cake. I wish I would have seen this sooner. I would have tackled it sooner. It would have been just easier to probably drop the torque box and put a new one in and before I welded my subframe connectors and all that. But hey, that's what happens with these projects. You take a step forward and you go two back. So, but no worries, we'll get it. So I didn't sand any of this down or strip any of this yet. So again, we're gonna tackle this, fix this up and same with that side. Hopefully, no, if nothing goes anywhere, I'll just do one at a time, you know, and uh, we'll go from there. So, all right guys, so I already wiped the car down about four times with Eastwood's pre-painting prep. 
and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time and then we'll get to mixing up some Eastwood's epoxy primer and we'll get uh, two coats on this car. So making progress, excited. Once this bottom's done, we're on our way. So let's get to it. All right, it's been 30 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and put the second coat on. All right, guys, we got primer on this. This part looks great. Too bad we couldn't do it all. I may still do all this backside before I tackle those just because I gotta figure out what we're doing there. So who knows, we'll see, might get all that done. It's looking good, it's looking real good. So I can't wait to get all this done. This is, uh, it's kind of like a milestone getting all this done, right? It'd be like starting to put the car back together and everything, which would be awesome. Get it flipped back over, start getting suspension and everything under it. All right guys, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell to get alerts whenever we post new videos. Go ahead and put your questions or comments down below and we'll see you in the next one.